You're tuned into the heart-pounding, adrenaline-fueled world of G2GP, where the stakes are high and the wins are legendary. Strap in and hold tight, because the bets are in and the games are on. And now, here he is with this week's bangers, Charles Wallace. What's up, guys? Welcome to From Gridiron to Gold Post. I'm, I can't even contain myself. I'm your host, Charles Wallace. Let's talk about it. Monday Night Football. What happened? You can tell me. I know what happened. I know what's been happening. But what do you think happened? Hmm? Nothing? Curious. I'll tell you what happened. Dog shit quarterback? I've been saying it. Dog shit coach? I've been saying it. Uh, literally a dinosaur. Vic Fangio, he was a defensive coordinator for the Triceratops clan. They went eight and eight. That's how old he is. Kellen Moore, mm. he's actually not that bad, but I've already heard people up here in Philadelphia blaming Kellen Moore. Well, why do you call it a play? What do you mean? And I think it was a stupid play call. Like, I think it was a dumb decision. You run the ball twice there. Um, That's it. You run the ball twice there on third and three. Because you're not the first time they don't have timeouts, right? So you're already taking the clock down to about a minute. If you don't get it, right? You take the clock down to about a minute and you run it again, right? And at that point, if you don't get it twice, what you're going to, like anyone who watches that game knows they were going to get it if they just ran the fucking football, right? As a Falcons plus five and a half guy, I was like, all right, the scumbags are going to win, but I'm going to cover. You know what I mean? That's what I was thinking before that like whole fucking debacle. I was like, this is, you know, good teams win, great teams cover. Falcons, great team. Eagles, not a good team. Definitely not a great team because they didn't cover, not even a good team because you couldn't even cover against the Falcons. Whatever. I digress. You run that ball twice there. Um, but then Barkley, you know, the gazillion dollar man, not a gazillion dollars, but you know what I mean. Um, can't catch it. He has stone hands. Stone hands, butter fingers on the stone hands. It's just, it's despicable. Uh, leads the league in drops per running back since he's come into the league. That's just a little tidbit, a little fun fact for you. But then even after that, if you run the ball twice there, right? Or if you run it on third, and then if you want to throw it on fourth because the clock's going to stop anyway, even if you don't get it, fair play to you. You leave them pinned back even if you don't convert on their own, what, six, seven-yard line? And they got to move the ball 55, 65 yards in about 57 seconds with no timeouts. So they're going to be targeting the boundaries more. Right? They're going to be targeting the sidelines more. You're kind of taking away that middle of the field there. Um and if they do complete anything over the middle, they're going to be frantic. They weren't frantic at all. They were calm. Captain Kirk, cool as a cucumber. Kirk O'Bangs. Beautiful. I loved every second of it. Disgusting. And then, and then RB1, noodle arm, gets the ball back. He needs about 12 yards to get into Jake Elliott, that smug little weasel. Good kicker, though. Smug little weasel to get in a range for him. And what does he do? Oh, fuck me. Let me fucking launch it. A.J. Brown down there somewhere. Oh, wait, he's hurt? He's not playing tonight? Well, we lost. I threw it to three Falcons. I loved every second of it. Chef's kiss. Dog shit team. By the way, the Eagles lost to a dog shit team. Bottom 10 quarterback in football. Jalen Hurts, by the way. Nobody wants to talk about it, though. And this city, though, just making excuses for him. This is going to be probably the longest fucking rant ever on this podcast, on this show. Making excuses for him. Dude's 2-9 and nine in his last 11 starts. If Carson Wentz did that, crucified, town square, that's what he would have been. It just, it, 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 it befuddles me. How does one, one can be dog shit, right? One has the Avengers, right? Howie Roseman put together the Avengers for one. And he's dog shit. Two and nine last 11. 24 turnovers in his last 18 regular season starts. That's another fun fact for you. Um, the other guy, four out of five years here, or three out of his last four years here, because the rookie year, everyone gets a little grace, right? Three out of his four years here, besides his rookie year, three to one touchdown interception ratio in three or four years. Only other quarterbacks to do that, um, in that time span, Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, right? And he was doing it, throwing it to shop right workers. Guy was bagging my groceries at fucking 11 a.m. At 1 p.m., he was at the link running a slant. That's who he was throwing to. Three to one touchdown and interception ratio. Three out of his last four years here. Um, but then the one year in 2020, when players were opting out left, right, and center, 
and he was throwing the fucking, oh my God, Travis Fulgham, right? And he wasn't doing too hot. You know, hey, hand up, he wasn't doing too hot. Uh, yeah, everyone said, get him the fuck out of here. Hate that guy. He has to go put the other guy in. Now, all of a sudden, the Avengers are here. Guy's doing worse. Turning the ball over more than Carson Wentz ever did. Two and nine in his last 11. He just need more help. Oh, if AJ was in, he would have been fine. Well, at what point does the quarterback have to win a football game? He's your fucking quarterback. At what point does he have to do anything? What, why do you coddle him? Why do you like just caress his testicles on a daily basis? It disgusts me. But give him a lifetime contract. You fucking scumbags. You backstabbing, treacherous little goons. Give him a lifetime contract. Keep Sirianni there. He's He doesn't do anything. He has no control of the offense. The defense is fucking dinosaur Dan's up in the booth. What is he? He's the backup mascot to Swoop. And big fucking Dom is the backup mascot to him. Disgusting. Not a serious, not serious people that root for him. Not a serious organization. Give that fucking scumbag a lifetime contract. Give that fucking running back with a noodle arm behind the fucking center a lifetime contract because it's exactly what you fucks deserve. Anyway, let's get into it. Let's get into some picks, right? We're here for that. Bundesliga, baby. Freiburg, baby. I love him. Moneyline. Uh, coming in at plus 140, Freiburg have only scored five goals from 6.9 expected goals this season, going up against Heidenheim, who have eight goals scored from only six expected goals. So they're due for some goal math regression. Freiburg due for some luck to go their way in front of goal. Uh, and Freiburg are third in XG behind just Bayern Leverkusen and Bayern Munich. Um, they've only allowed 2.7 expected goals in three games played. I really do think they're going to start finding some better results soon. Uh, they did win last week for us, but I think they're going to keep building on that. They're going to find better results. I love the plus money play on them here. We keep it moving. We're going uh, Kiel, um, double chance here. Sorry. I, I write like chicken scratch and it's one o'clock in the morning when I'm recording this. So I'm writing even worse. Uh, Kiel draw, not draw, no bet. Double chance. Comes in at minus 130. They're going up against Bochum here. Bochum, have only allowed five goals, even though they have conceded 7.9 XG, where Kiel has allowed eight expected goals. So they're pretty much right on par with Bochum defensively. Um, I do think, though, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they play Bayern Munich. Obviously, Kiel did. Um, so this is a much more doable test than last weekend against Bayern. They did concede six times. They gave up a fucking mouth, a boatload of expected goals. It disgusts me. Um, but Bochum have only scored once in three games so far this term. So I do like the value here. I know it's minus 130, a little chalky here. But I do like um, at least a draw for Kiel here. If you want to sprinkle the money line, I'm not going to tell you not to. You know, it's your money. But I'm going to take them on the double chance. Keeping it moving. Uh, still in the Bundesliga, but moving to Sunday. Leipzig minus one comes in at plus 110 and they're going against St. Pauli and they have lost two of their three games by two or more goals and they've been shut out twice. Leipzig, on the other hand, have kept two clean sheets so far this term and they're going against the St. Pauli side that is only getting 2.3 shots on goal per game. So I don't think there's going to be much of a threat coming back at them as long as Leipzig can find the net once. You should at least get a push here. I don't see them conceding to this Pauli side. Uh, I like it here to get it minus one. Moving across the Autobahn now. You don't drive across the Autobahn to get to England. I don't give a fuck, dude. I really don't. You do now, you know? West Ham, double chance, minus 145. And then I put double parentheses. I double bracketed this. You want to do a little draw, no bet action on them to a plus 135. I don't hate it. You want to sprinkle them on the money line. At, what is it, plus two something? It's like plus 215 or something of that sort. Um, can do that as well. Going against Chelsea here in the Saturday morning, 7.30 a.m. game. I'm a slut for it, by the way. Love waking up. Little Cubano coffee, bro. All right? Watch 7.30 game. Love to do it. You don't like it. You want to sleep in? It's your prerogative. You're a coward. You're a loser. You're a Nancy. But we're going to go West Ham here uh, on the double chance at minus 145. Half of Chelsea's eight goals came in one half. Not one game, one half against Wolves. And West Ham have scored in all four of their games so far this campaign. Um, 
Chelsea also do for goal mouth regression here. They're very lucky in terms of their expected goals compared to their actual goal tally. Uh, whereas the Hammers do for a little bit of luck to go their way in front of goal. So I think, I actually think they get it done here, but I like the uh, double chance, you know, just to be safe. Sprinkle the draw, no bet. If you want to sprinkle, you know, a little even less sprinkle on that money line, feel free to do it. I'm not going to judge it. You know what I mean? Keeping it moving. Leicester and Everton over two and a half. This comes in minus 120. Now, seven of eight games involving uh, these sides have gone over this mark this term, with four of those seven games having four goals or more. Uh, both defenses are in the bottom six as well for opponent expected goals. I don't have much more to say about that. I just think both of these defenses are bad. The games have been action-packed, that they've been involved, and I like there to be goals in this one. Over two and a half, minus 120. Staying in England, staying in the uh, Premier League, but moving to Sunday. The marquee game of the weekend, if you will, Man City Arsenal. We're going under two and a half here, minus 115. Uh, last season in their two league matchups, one total goal was produced. A 0-0 game and then a one nothing game, obviously, if that's one goal produced. like wh What else is it going to be? Jackass. Don't even know why I said it like that. But uh, City have conceded one goal each in their last three. Arsenal have kept three clean sheets in four matches so far this year. I think also, you know, the fact is these teams know each other well. These managers know each other well. You're going to see a cagey affair here. Neither team, neither team wants to lose this. Both teams obviously would love to win it. But against a team you're directly in contention with for a title, it's very, very paramount that you don't lose, that you don't drop points. Especially even this early in the year, you don't want them to get that leg up on you. Uh, it can be hard to overcome, especially for Arsenal, because you know City, when it hits December, they're going to be fucking jackasses about it, right? They're going to like lose to Brentford it, around Thanksgiving, and then they're going to be like, fuck it, to win 17 in a row and ruin the league for everybody else. You know it's going to happen. So Arsenal can't afford to lose here if they want to have any chance of sniffing their jock come March. You know, and I'm not even May, come March. So they can't afford to fucking get in a back and forth affair here. I like under two and a half at minus 115. Now we're moving. College football, baby. You know I love it. I'm a slut for it. Friday night lights, baby. Not Friday Night Lights, we've talked about this. Not We're not betting on children. We're betting on young men. It's allowed. Illinois and Nebraska under 47, or not under, under 43. Again, chicken scratch writing. Under 43 comes in at minus 110 here on the Friday Night Lights. Now, the teams rank 115th and 122nd in pace of play. Uh, neither defense has allowed more than 17 points in any game this year. The last two head-to-head -head meetings have gone under this number. Uh, and both defenses are top 50 in opponent yards per play. Now, 43, a key number here. Uh, if it goes below, if it goes 42 and a half or lower, I don't like it. If it goes 43 and a half or higher, I fucking love it even more. I like it enough to bet at 43. Anything below it, I don't want to touch it. Uh, keeping it moving to Saturday now, Mississippi State plus six. This comes in at minus 112. Now, the Gators of Florida, 0-3 against the spread. Number 123 in opponent yards per play. Number 128 in opponent yards per pass attempt. While Mississippi State is 28th offensively in yards per pass attempt. I think this is a bounce back spot for them. They got embarrassed uh, by by some of my boys from the MAC. Maction came early, bitches. But Mississippi State going to bounce back from that humbling defeat last weekend. Uh, I'm going to sprinkle the money line a little bit here. Give me Mississippi State plus six at minus 112. Sprinkle on the money. Keeping it pushing here. Hashtag respect the troops. Army minus six comes in at minus 108. Now they're going against Rice here. 88th in opponent yards per run. If you know anything about college football, you know Army's going to run it down their throat. They are fourth so far in yards per rush offensively. They also have a rest edge. They're coming off of a bye week. Uh, I think they're just going to wear on them as the game goes on. You're going to see Maybe the first quarter, you're only getting three and a half, four yards of carry. By the fourth quarter, you're going to be seeing gash yards, nine yards here, 12 yards here, touchdown here. It's going to get away from Rice uh, as this game goes on. Give me Army minus six. Pushing along. The trials, the tribulations, they keep coming, but so do we. Michigan plus five and a half minus 108. I think this is a great buy low spot on, on them. Um, USC. 
you know, new to the Big Ten, coming across the country now to Michigan, you know, pretty much across the country, not all the way, but they're coming pretty far across. They're reaching, you know, like that across the country. They're not coming out of frame like this, but they're like this. This is about how far they are, pretty much across the country. Um, Michigan's looked awful, all right? There's no way around it. But just two weeks ago, they were minus eight and a half in this spot, okay? I think people are overreacting to the Texas game. Uh, I know they didn't look good against Arkansas State. They really didn't look good against Fresno State either. No, it, yeah, if I'm being honest with you. But, you know, they, they, they're they not this bad, okay? Also, um, they have the better defense than USC. They still do. And Alex Orgy is starting this game. He's getting his first start of the year. Um, and he's a dual threat quarterback. This is a USC defense allowing five yards per rush this year. Michigan's going to lean heavy on that run. They're going to lean heavy on the crowd. They're going to win this game outright, probably. Parentheses, probably. We're going to sprinkle them on the money line as well. SMU plus three, minus 112. This is the better defense against. They're going against TCU. This is the better defense playing at home. Uh, they rank fifth defensively in EPA per drive. This is easily the hardest test of the year for the TCU offense. Simple as that. It's a very short line. I don't see much between these teams. I think the best unit on either side is going to be SMU's defense. Give me them at home with the points, plus three, minus 112. One more college football one. This is disgusting. This is gross. This is abysmal. This is the Big Bertha. The Big Bertha play of the week, if you will. Florida State money line, minus 135. It's disgusting. Last week's Big Bertha play of the week, was disgusting. Okay, the Carolina Panthers. Didn't work. Didn't work at all. It was an awful decision. Shouldn't have done it. But you go home with Big Bertha. She texts you two weeks later. How'd she even find you? You didn't think he gave her your number. Sorry, but she did. You didn't give it to her. She took it out of your phone. She texts you two weeks later. I'm late. Who are you? Don't know you. Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? That was equivalent of that game last week. This one's going to be much better. I hope. This big birth that we never hear from them again. Because it goes splendidly. We never have to hear from them again. FSU money line minus 135. Listen, if I'm wrong, I can live with it. All right, you got Cal. This this one, right, they're coming out of frame. If I walked over to the wall over there, that would be the equivalent of how far Cal is traveling for this game. Uh, all the way across the country. FSU is the more talented team. They still are. I don't trust this Cal pass protection they're daring me to take it. They're saying, you won't take Florida State. You won't. They're 0-3. You won't take them. You're a pussy. You're a coward. You're a weasel. We'll see. Florida State money line, you know. Be seeing you. Minus 135. Here we go to the NFL. Starting it off, Thursday night player prop. You know we have to do it. We're 2-0. 2 and 0 and, uh, on Thursday night player props this year. Knock. Hold on. That's a knock on wood. All right? That's a knock on wood for that one. Xavier Worthy, touchdown week one. We got that. No big deal. Uh, James Cook, over 60 and a half rush yards last week. Got that with ease. No big deal. We even hit a couple ladder spots on it. Climbed the ladder on that all the way up to 78. Uh, Should have got to 80. We would have hit 100 if the game was close in any way, shape, or form. It is what it is. I'm not mad about it. Only devastated. Thursday night player prop of the week, Jacoby Brissett, under .5 passing touchdowns. This comes in at plus 125. Now, the Jets, have on, they've only allowed one passing TD this year, and it was last week against Tennessee. It was a 40-yard just bomb to Calvin Ridley. Um, the Pats themselves only have one passing touchdown so far. And if you look at Brissett's over-under on his completion line, it's 17.5. So only about a little under 4.5 completions per quarter is what they're – accounting for with him in this game I, I just don't see a ton of chances for him to really even take shots to the end zone I don't think they're going to be in the red zone much in this game at all I think it's going to be a sloppy game on both sides I think you might get one to two end zone shots that you got to defend maybe a couple guys that you got to tackle within the red zone who catch balls prior to getting in but I don't think there's you're not going to be defending you're not going to be you know, on your heels defending this Patriots offense. You're not going to have them on the field that, that much. I love them not to get a touchdown pass, plus 125. Moving to Sunday. Now, we're not the public. We're the sharp lick. 
all right? The public has been getting just brutalized in the NFL this year. So some of these scare me, all right? I only have three plays this week. Nothing really stood out to me. I'm not one to just force it. You know, I don't like doing that. But I kind of sided with the public on some of these. So I'm disgusted with myself if I go 0-3 here. Well, 1-2 and because 1 can't lose. You know the one that can't lose. But 2 of them might lose, right? Tampa Bay minus 6.5, minus 115. All right? Now, they are yet to allow a passing touchdown, okay? Yet They are yet to allow a passing touchdown this season. Playing a Denver team, coming across the country again. That's pretty much across the country. You know, we've talked a lot about that. But they are pretty much across the country. Um, I just don't see how Denver's going to keep up. That's really all it comes down to. I just don't see how Denver keeps up in this one. Um, their defense isn't bad. The offense just doesn't have what it takes to keep up, in my humble opinion. Minus six and a half for Tampa Bay, minus 115. Now, this is the one that can't lose. This is the banker. This is the one that couldn't fail. New Orleans, minus three, minus 101. LOL. That's all the notes I have. LOL, in parentheses, Kamara ladders and double parentheses, alternate lines. I just, I, the, if you watched them play Dallas, they were bullying that defensive line of the Dallas Cowboys. Better than this fucking Eagles defensive line. They're going to push them up and down the field. I just, oh, I thought I saw something. Jesus fucking Christ, dude. I'm fucking Jesus, dude. I saw my own hair. And I looked up and it looked like something was there. Bro, what the fuck? It's too late for me to be recording this. I get spooked out. I just don't see how it's going to be a close game. Now I'm getting spooked out, bro. Now I got fucking chills because I saw my hair flop down into my eye. Let's get this last one done. I'm going to run up the steps. LA Chargers, Pittsburgh Steelers, under 35 and a half, comes in at minus 110. Now I'm looking out here, bro. Uh, both teams bottom five in offensive pace. I just don't see this game having anything. Each game involving them, the games involving these teams this year have gotten an average of 29 and a half points. I think it's a rock fight, man. And I have in parentheses here too, alternate lines. You know, I think we could see this game in the mid-20s. High to high to mid-20s in this game. I think field goals are going to be the story of this one. I don't think either defense is going to give up more than, you know, one touchdown. That's what I got for you this week. Now, let me run. Let me scurry up these steps because I saw my hair. All because I saw my hair lop down into my eye and got spooked. Now I'm spooked. See you next week. Hopefully. Jeez.